What you cooking today, Miss Martha? Well, some people will call them turnovers, some people call them fry pies, some people call them empanadas. I'm going to tell you how to make hot pockets. Yep. The hardest thing, or the, what's going to take the longest to make is the apple pie filling, because half of the ones I'm going to make today are going to be pepperoni pizza stuffed hot pockets, and the other half are going to taste like those uh, delicious things that come from pot pies. They're called hot apple pie turnovers, and they're all covered in the cinnamon sugar on the outside. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Those are my son's favorite. Uh, I, we created them here, and they're just as good. So let's get started on the apple pie filling. Uh, originally, I usually use Pink Lady apples because that's what we have in the house. That's what my husband likes to eat. But I couldn't find Pink Lady when I was the other day. So I've got Honeycrisp. And these are some monster apples. These are like, you know, one and a half times the size of the other apples I usually. So I'm not going to need seven apples, which I wasn't going to use seven apples anyway because that's if I was going to make all eight of the Hot Pockets apple pies, but I'm not. Half are gonna be pepperoni pizza, and the other half are going to be apple pies. And I have a lot of extra substitution uh, items on the recipe that I will post to YouTube that will show you, maybe you don't want pepperoni pizza, maybe you want ham and cheese, maybe you want uh, a fig and ricotta, maybe you want something more savory, but I have suggestions that, you know, or you can just go crazy and make your own fillings for them. The, well, like I said, what's most time consuming is uh, getting the apple pie filling onto the stove and let that be simmering down while I'm making the dough and moving ahead. Uh, I've showed you the stages that it takes to get to the apple where I want it to be. You start off with your apple, you've washed it, you've peeled it, you've sliced it into thin little slices, and then you're going to dot, then you're going to, it's easier this way for me, and then I will take the little knife and I will cut the little triangle out here. I'll get the core out that way, okay? And then I'll go ahead and I'll dice them up. So you don't have to sit here and watch on camera for me to finish doing this. I'll pick back up in just a minute when I've got the diced apples in the pot and then I'll show you what goes in next for the apple pie filling. And then we'll move along and make the dough for the Hot Pockets. Okay, got to this point where I have them all peeled, sliced thin, got the core out. And I'm going to stack them and slice them and dice them. That's right, slap my finger off while I turn to look at the camera. Let's not let that happen, for God's sakes. All right, y'all need to watch all this. I'll pick back up when I've got them all diced. Okay, all my apples are in the pot. Put them the cutting board because I'm going to need that later to roll out my dough on. We're going to start off adding what we need to make the apples turn into apple pie filling. I'm going to need a half cup light brown sugar. Half cup white sugar, regular granulated sugar. Goes in the pot. Just a piece of stray apple there. Now I'm going to need. One tablespoon of lemon juice. Woo! <laughs> that went everywhere. Okay. I think I got more on the counter than I got in the pot, but one tablespoon of lemon juice. One teaspoon. Nutmeg, well, where the pumpkin pie, here's pumpkin pie spice first. One teaspoon pumpkin pie spice. Boy, I'm spilling everything to death. One quarter teaspoon nutmeg. One quarter teaspoon cloves. Oop, a little too much. 
or a quarter teaspoon salt. My thumbs are kind of giving me an issue. I wasn't going to bake today, but it's a rainy day, so I decided I would I would do these. But you know, I got arthritis in my thumbs. Now, these other three items, we don't need them yet. We're going to put this over on the stove on a low heat, and we're going to let this start cooking down. And in about 20 minutes from now, we're going to have to put a little a bit of a slurry in there because otherwise. When you fold it up inside your little empanada or your fry pies, you scrape the little side with the fork like that, it'll just bake right out in the air fryer. So uh, I'm gonna have to, we're gonna take a little bit of cornstarch and water and make a little slurry. And we're gonna add that in to thicken it up. Then we're gonna remove it from the heat. We're gonna add butter and butter flavoring. And then that'll be ready to go ahead and we can move ahead with making that part of the pies. But I've got other stuff to do while this is cooking. So I'm gonna take it over to the stove that I'm gonna pause the camera and clean my counter up. Sorry I made a mess. Okay, I'm going to have to keep my eye on the pie filling. I'll have to go going back and forth and stirring that because I don't want it to stick to the pot and I don't want it to scorch. But we're going to start on the dough mixture here. I have other things laid out here because I've got the stuff to do the cinnamon sugar that goes on the pie. I've got the stuff to do the egg wash before the dough goes in the oven. I've got the stuff to make the filling for the pepperoni pizza. But let's stay focused. Let's stay on, stay on track, Martha. I've got the pie filling ready. Now I'm going to do the dough. I need three cups of plain flour. Two. I'm not going to put the third one in yet. Every cup of flour, you need a teaspoon of baking powder. Don't do like I do when I'm doing some of my other recipes. You don't want to overpower the spoonful. That's one, two, three. I'm going to need a quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay, use that, use that ingredient. Now I'm going to put the rest of my flour in. I'm going to keep the flour out because I'm going to have to dust my rolling pin and dust the uh, cu cutting board with flour so it won't stick my hands as well. All right, that's all mixed in. Now I need three to four tablespoons. I'm using zero trans fat here, so I'm using the butter flavor Crisco. Okay. That aside, this one my hands gonna get messy. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my tablespoon of butter extract because I don't, I don't want it to taste like a, a dumpling. I want it to taste like the hot pocket on the outside of my dough. So teaspoon butter extract. Okay. Get a, I need a fork. I'll break up my shortening a little bit here. Now, I'm going to need one. I'm going to shake my buttermilk. I know that's better. One and a half cups. I'm going to start with one cup, see if that's going to do me good. I, I know this, make sure you're breaking up all that Crisco, your shortener that you have in there. I know this looks like it's really a complicated, because there's a lot of steps to it. That's because I made it hard on myself. I'm doing two different things. I'm doing the savory, I'm doing the pepperoni pizza hot pockets, and then I'm also doing the cinnamon sugar apple pie turnovers. So I'm doing dinner and dessert as a, as a combo here. 
but I wanted to show you that you can do a lot of different things with this recipe. Okay. I'm not going to need the other part of the milk. I can tell right now it's sticking together nicely. I don't want to over, I'm trying to keep a clean finger so I can <laughs> pause the camera. I want to pick up what you see. Okay. When it starts the sticking together, so you can squish it together and it's staying together for you, it's starting to make a dough. You don't want to overwork it. But I need clean hands to go from this point, so. Be right back, I wash my hands. Okay, instead of taking Mohammed to the mountain, which is me moving my camera all the way over to the stove, I'm going to bring the mountain to Mohammed and show you that they've got to thicken up, they've got to cook down. But they're coming along nicely, and they smell delicious. Put these back on the stove. The apple pie still is cooking over there. Before I finish, get my hands back dirty again on the dough. When I'm gonna do the pizza, we happen to, sometimes I'll make spaghetti, pizza, I'll make spaghetti sauce and I won't put any meat in it. And I'll call that pizza sauce a marinara sauce. Sometimes it's just easy just to use the jar. And I happen to like the ragu home style. Mozzarella, shred it. These come from Wegman. We find these are you can get deli pepperonis anywhere your deli is, wherever you live. There's a large slice and then the little dice one, and the two different textures make a nice combination. But I'm gonna have to cut these a little bit up so they'll fit inside the hot pot for this. This that's gonna be the pepperoni. So I've got pizza sauce, pepperoni and cheese, and Italian seasonings. So there's nothing I have to mix up with that. I'm gonna use those one at a time when I'm going into the dough. So let's let's take it from the other side. My hands up. Oh, where's my rolling pin? I don't want to overwork my dough. I do want to make sure that I don't have a lump of shortening in one little corner that it's all worked in well together. One more turn and it should be okay. Okay, man. We're gonna portion this out. Uh, this this amount of dough hit the three cups, and with the uh, let's see, it ended up being only three apples because they were such large apples. I'm going to get eight hot pockets. Four, I'm going to make the pepperonis, and the other four, I'm going to make apple. So I'm going to need eight pieces. So I'm going to cut the dough in half. Cut that in half again. Well, let's straighten that up a little bit so it's a true half. Cut that in half again. And half again. Same thing, straightened up a little bit so it's going to be a true half. Yeah, when you're sitting there, when you're in third grade, and you listen to the math teacher, and you go, Why do I need to learn this multiplication and division and stuff? I'll never, yes, you do. You use math all the time when you're cooking. Cut those in half. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, eight pieces. There we go. Good job. I'm going to my. I have cleaned the counter off. I'm going to move these off. I'm going to work them one at a time. Hold four back for the pie. And these over here, these four will be for the pepperoni pizza. Let me get that little clumpy flour off. Put some fresh flour on it. Not too much. Okay, I want to start off with kind of a rectangle shape because we're going to fold it like it's a book and then crimp around the edges after we have our filling in it. Okay? So I'm going to start with like a rectangle shape. Oh, 
do you need to pause, wash my hands, stir my apple pie filling? Hang on, hang on. I'm back. Okay. If I'm going to fold it over, I'm going to want it longer this way. Away from me. Here. I'm going to want at least eight inches or so in that direction, four inches in width. I'm going to try to straighten it up a little bit so I can get a nice pretty rectangle here. Over on camera, yeah, you can see my hands working. A little thinner than that. Flip it over. Pretty. Put that flower underneath it. Okay. You have to shape it a little bit with your hands to get the shape that you want. This way, it's almost long enough. We got a little bit wider. Okay. Almost got me one. Do so I have to pull the rule out to show you what I'm working on? I think you can tell. I think you can see. Remember, this is just a home cook. It doesn't have to be precise. I'm not catering somebody's event and they're paying me to do this for them. I'm just cooking and baking as a a sign of love and respect to show nutrition as my duty as the wife and mommy in the house. And, and sharing the recipe so I don't forget. And it's harder for me to do it like this now. I would have been way ahead of this game if I wasn't sitting here trying to show how many uh, spoonfuls, how many cupfuls, and what order to do it in. Because I just, you know, when you've been doing it as long as I've been doing it over the 60s, it's just, it's a habit. It's like driving a car. You don't have to sit there and think, now I need to turn the injection. Now I need to put, you just drive it. You know how to drive the car. You know how to, you know how to bake. You know how to cook. Because you just run it on memory. However, if you've read my little bio, you know my mother passed away from dementia related to Alzheimer's. And uh, I don't know if that's a genetic thing. They say it is, they say it is, and I don't know. But I'm getting my little good recipes down here in print so that uh, I won't forget them. Let me let me do a little check here. Yeah. Make it a little bit longer. Perfect. Let's see if I can show you the thickness. See how thin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There. I'm not going to pause camera. I'm just going to walk over and stare my apple pie filling. You can just sit here and look at how pretty the dough looks while I'm doing that. I got to turn it down a little bit. I'm ready to stuff. I'm ready to stuff the pizza one. This can be stuffed ahead of time. You're not going to do it. I'm going to mix up the egg wash, but I won't do that to right when I already have all eight of them stuffed or however many I'm going to cook at a time. Whichever, however many will fit on my sheet in that, what's getting ready to go in for the bacon will be the one you put the egg wash on. You're not going to do it on all eight of them because they'll get soggy. You do it once you've got your, uh, your uh, air fryer set up, plugged in. Got your tray out, got your tray sprayed with a little nonstick spray. You ready to put the uh, two that you're going to cook, or three, four, however you're going to fit, whatever size air fryer that you have. That's when you do the egg wash. If you are baking in the oven, because you don't have an air fryer, you're going to bake in the oven. I've, I've showed the difference in times on my uh, recipe that I'm going to type out and share on YouTube channel, my cooking channel, Miss Martha Loves to Cook. You would still do the egg wash. If you're going to do a fry pie, which you see, when I grew up, we did fry pies. And what our filling was was sweet potato. Sweet potato pie filling. 
Yeah, that's my daddy's favorite. And we had apple trees out back. We did the apple apples often. We didn't really do, I didn't do these pizza kind of things until, you know, college years and stuff like that. We did, they were sweet pies. They were dessert pies. So when you're going to do the pizza one, you can't do it. If I was going to do a regular pizza, I would put this on the tray that's been prepped to go in the air fryer, and I would pre-cook it for about, you know, three or four minutes because the uh, pizza sauce will make the dough soggy and then you pull it out and then you put your pizza sauce on and then you put your cheese and you put your toppings and then you put it back in and you let it bake another five, eight minutes or so. Same thing with a hot pocket. I can't put this and pre-cook this because then I'm not gonna be able to fold it and crimp it and make the turnover with it in the air fryer. So I'm not going to put the sauce as the first thing on my dough. I'm gonna put cheese down first. So. Open. Scissors. Aren't these adorable? First thing you're gonna do is you when you you got it shaped away from you. So you got like, let's say, 10 inches that way, four inches this way. Your rectangle's going like this, away from you. Perpendicular to you, not parallel, perpendicular. Another math term. Okay. You're not gonna go all the way to the edge, just like you would with you doing a, 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 a regular pizza, because you're gonna have to be able to crimp the edges to keep the filling inside. But you're gonna put the cheese in the middle, down the middle. Not too much. Just to cover the middle. You can see. Then we're going to put the sauce on top of the cheese. It doesn't matter if it goes over. Okay, okay that's good. We're going to put your pepperoni in now. And the larger pepperonis. I was going to cut them, but I'm just going to tear them by hand. I'm going to go back with more cheese. That way I'll have cheese between the dough. Okay. I'm going to need two hands to seal it with, so I won't follow the camera. I'll just wash my hands here real quick. Clean fork so I can prep the edges. Fold them in half like it was a book. Whoops. Doesn't matter, I'm going to put egg wash over that, but I did get some on my hand, wipe that off. Seal the edges with my fingers. Trim off a little of the extra. I had a little blow out there, but that's okay. I want to make sure it's sealed and won't come out in the air fryer. A little off this side. Move it over a little bit 
sleep. There you go. Can you still see me on camera? I'm gonna take your fork, not the side that was a. Uh, get that out of the way. So I'm gonna get it all over the pastry. You're gonna go around, crimp your edges. All right, she looks pretty. Now let's get all up with a little egg wash on it. You put a plate and roll too. But remember, we won't put the egg wash on until right when it's ready to go in the air fryer. I need a spatula. I'm going to stir my apple pie all over here. Move this little pretty boy out of the way. Let you have a better look at it. Okay. We're going to cover it. We're going to wash them down really nice and pretty with the egg wash. I'll show you how to make that in a little bit. I've got three more pizza ones to make. I'll do that off camera though, because uh, I need to go watch, attend to my uh, pie filling as well. Be right back. I'm gonna let you check in and see how the apple pie filling is coming. Nicely. It's not ready yet though. I'm gonna put that back on the burner. Alright, I'm ready to do the next pizza one. I just want you to know that I'm not gonna stop them. That's my son's dinner, so that's why that, that one's kind of nice and full like that, because he'll, he'll eat just that one, and almost like a, I guess a stromboli or something, but we're going to make this be a little bit smaller. So we're going to start off with cheese. I've got it rolled out into the rectangular shape. Put the cheese down first. Try to stay just on this bottom half if you can. Halfway. Put a little sauce on top of that, and then we're going to roll it down. Filling everything today, aren't I? Put sauce on top of that. Small pepperonis on top of that. You know, this is so easy, kids can do it. One large pepperoni. I might just do a half of them, but one large pepperoni. That's enough. More cheese. Fold my top half down, crimp it around. Come off the extra edges. Need that part and my fork. Don't go all the way to the edge when you fill it now, it's going to just cook all right out. Crimp around with your fork. Crimp around with your fork. Okay. Got another one. Another one right there. Another little pizza hot pocket. He'll get his egg wash. Two more to do. By that time, perhaps my uh, other pie filling should be ready. It's got to cool a little bit before I can put it in. In the meantime, uh, well, no, I'll, I'll finish this up so I can move on. Uh, I'll finish this up. First. Then I'll come back and show you how to do the egg wash. Okay, my pizza one's ready. I'm going to move those out the way for a minute. Still don't have the egg wash on because it's not time to put that on yet. I'm going to bring over the apple pie filling. I have to move it off the heat. Watch out, Bobo. Don't be like that. I won't drip on you. There. Okay. I'm going to get a 
a second spoon. Okay, can you see? Can you see the liquid pour off? I need that thicker than that so it doesn't just pour right out and say there's liquid in here. I don't want that to just pour right out of my pie. Set that over there. So I'm going to take three tablespoons of cornstarch and a little muzz. Add some water to it. So three tablespoons. Now, measuring this difference, and I did the baking powder. It's a big old spoon for one, two, three. Water on that. About two tablespoons. Stir that up. Oh, need a little bit more water. Yeah. Stir that up and make a paste out of it, or a little bit thinner than a paste. We call it a slurry in the cookie biz. Get all dissolved and just make lumps. I don't want that in my filling. Okay, move that away. So I'll splash into it. So I'm off the heat. I'm going to pour in my cornstarch mixture. Stir it in. And watch it pick it up. Okay. And the rest of it. There we go. Set over there. I'm gonna take this back to the heat. Let it cook for about five minutes, so we'll pick it up. Then I'm gonna come back over and we're gonna add butter. I mean, well, it's not butter. Zero trans fats, margarine. And a little butter flavor. That's why I'm gonna cheat and make you pink it. I got real butter in it. Then I go back to the stove. Okay, show you that. Stick it up nicely. No, no running out like maple syrup type thing running off of it. So I'm gonna add in three tablespoons of margarine. This is room temperature, so it ought to go ahead and melt without having to go back on the heat. And one teaspoon butter flavoring. Okay. Well, I tell you, do I have stuff all over me? Yeah. If you don't look like this when you're cooking, somebody else did the cooking for you. Do you see steam coming off of it? So this has got to cool, or it'll just melt my dough over here. So we'll put this, as soon as, as soon as all the butter gets melted, we'll set this aside, and we'll go ahead and we'll mix up the cinnamon sugar, and we'll mix up the egg wash, and we're at the homewood stretch here. I'll just roll out the dough real quick. Stuff it. Cook. Let you get a nice pretty look at it. Off to the side, I've cut the stove off, and it's just sitting over out of my way. Move this out the way. Okay. I'm going to roll those out, but you've already seen me roll it out, so I can do that off camera. Let's move to something else. Three tablespoons of margarine already melted in the microwave and it's cooled down here. Hand 
towel at? I lost it. Let's get another hand towel out. Did you take my hand towel for her? Did you take my hand towel? I'll play with you in a minute. I'm almost finished. Okay, well, beat up her egg. I've got, you could use buttermilk or you could use heavy cream. Let's check it out good. I can't, I'm gonna get my little baby help me open it. I need three tablespoons. One, two, three. Heavy cream. I'll add my melted butter. Is that a chance to cool down? Yeah. Got my pastry brush ready. When it comes time to ready to bake, I'm going to want to put it on the pepperoni filled one. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of Italian herbs on top of the egg wash. I'm going to bake. I'm not going to put that, obviously, on the apple pie one. But when the apple pies come out, as soon as they come out of the oven, we're going to need cinnamon sugar to go on them. Container over here. Excuse me, guys. Come on, you With the economy the way it is, the price everything is these days, you can go out there and you can buy yourself cinnamon sugar. But why? Oh, I need to wash my cup out. For every one cup of sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon. And you've got cinnamon sugar. So I've got four pies. I don't need more than one cup. Don't want to waste sugar. A gallon of milk is ten dollars here in Virginia. What is it where you live? One cup of sugar. Another spoon. Yeah, I make a lot of dishes. A lot of dirty dishes when I cook. Teaspoon of cinnamon. Put on mine, don't shake mine. But I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna put the, I'm not gonna put the pie in here and shake it like this because it'll fall apart. They're kind of fragile because it's homemade pastry. I'm gonna take a little spoon and kind of cover it, cover it, and flip it, cover it, cover it. Cinnamon sugar is ready. Cinnamon sugar ready. Delicious. 
Okay, I'm gonna pause the camera and roll this out. And by that time, my pie filling should be cool enough to go. Whew, this video is running long today. I knew it was a lot of work. Yeah, all right, let's put the apple pie filling in. I'll only do it on one half. Got one big spoonful there. Spread it out. That's good. Pull your top half down. Close it off. Close it off. Trim off the extra. Trim off the extra. Trim off the extra. Here we go. Crimp it up with your fork so nothing leaks out. Oops, can't believe it, gosh. One of the pepperoni ones back on here. Yeah, I'm going to do the egg wash on the cinnamon one first. I'm going to clean everything up. I'm, in the interest of time, I want to get two in there to be cooking. Then I can finish up my other. I've got three more to roll on the apple pies, and then I'll just keep baking and doing my own thing. But just so you can see what it looks like. So let's, let's do our egg wash. Lightly. Gently. edges if you can. Boop, 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 get the edges. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Now, this is the apple one. This is the pizza one. Move it over a little bit, sweetheart. Don't get any on you. Okay, got a little bit of time. Just a little tit, 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 Basil. Just a little bit. Don't be heavy handed on this one. And the oregano. We bring all. I've got my baking sheet. I've already sprayed. I've already sprayed my air fryer pan. It's a nonstick spray. I'm just doing two at a time right now because I'm running long on my video. We go. Going in 360 um, for 10 minutes, but I'm gonna check it at the five minute mark. Here we go. I'll pause it, save time, making this video go fast. All right, with the five minute mark, I had to pull them out and put my little holes in it with the fork. Going back in. We're getting there. Smells great. Okay, this is the eight minute mark. Ah, uh, they're not gonna have to go the whole 10 minutes. I'm gonna give about 30 more seconds. Okay, got them out of the oven. Now I've gotta put the cinnamon sugar on the apple pie one. Hey, Kito, I see on my feet. Yes. Everything I've done today has been messy. the pizza one first. Pretty that looks. Get a little bite. Oh yeah. There's a cheese ball. There's a cheese ball. Oh, let me drop it. I'll try I'll try the stubs. Good. Let's taste it. 
Mm. Mm. Let's do a hot pocket. Do the apple pie. That's a lot of work, but your family will love you for it. And it's kind, of, it's that, it's kind of fun to do. Cooking's fun to do. I'm gonna go finish up the other ones that I have to put in, cycle them in and out of baking in the air fryer. Then I'll, I'll post the video on my cooking channel on YouTube, including the recipe. Thank you for watching.